You're listening to Rolling Toe with trucking experts Kevin and Mike Beckett. This is the show where you ask the questions and we give you the diagnosis on how to get the most out of your truck. We'll talk about avoiding wear and tear, knowing your suspension and axles, and how to get more mileage from your tires. We're on the audio road. Let's get rolling. Good evening, this is Mike. And this is Kevin. And we're back again to annoy you with ridiculous answers about tire wear and handling issues. Things nobody wants to hear. That's right. But I did say in the advertisement we're going to solve the world's problems, so we'll try that at the same time. (laughs) I didn't see that part. What? (laughs) I don't know. We'll find something I'm tired of as the wheel turns. Yeah, solve the world's problems. Yeah, Yeah, I want want to go to national problems, not not soap opera stuff. I don't know what it is, but we'll figure it out. The price of corn. The price of corn. All right. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll work on that. That means we need more manure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or less ethanol. Or less ethanol. All right. Okay. Um, welcome to the show. If you have a question, push one on your phone keyboard. That'll put you in the queue so we know you have a question or a comment to make. And uh, if you push it twice, it'll erase you, so don't do that. Um We've got a start a discussion tonight on cupping. We have uh, discussed feathered wear to a fairly well. We've talked some about trailers. Uh, now we're going to get into cupping. And uh, this was the ninth post that I put on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, the pattern of cupping can manifest itself in an isolated section of the tire or around a third of the circumference, or all the way around the tire. It can appear on one shoulder, or both, or alternate from shoulders left and right across the tire. It can appear in the second rib, or the center rib. And all of these visual clues are helpful in identifying the source of the problem. The pattern of cupping changes between tread designs and casing structure. For example, a steer tire will not show the same cupping as a drive tire, for the same principal mechanical cause, say the bearings are loose. In the same way, a low rolling resistance tire can show different patterns from issues that do not cause cupping in the old standard tires. For example, the old standard tires, you could run 100 pounds inflation in the steer tire without too much trouble. But the new low rolling resistance tires for the same tire, if you're not running 115 or 120 PSI, the tire will cup like a, a son of a gun. As engineers change tire construction, compounds and tread designs, suspension designs, brake performance, and engine horsepower, the tire changes how it reflects the input of that force into the footprint. This means that the alignment tech and the maintenance manager must be open to new evaluations of the performance characteristics of the tire. Nothing remains the same in the area of the industry, so we must remain open to new ideas and solutions. Now, there are seven significant causes for cupping in truck tires that I've seen. One is inflation, and we've already done a couple of shows on inflation. Balance can be a factor. Mismount of either the tire on the rim or the rim on the hub. Bent rims, which includes improperly mounted spoke rims. Feathered wear, which we talked quite a bit about. Loose components and mismatch of tires in dual wheels, tall tire and short tire, and also uh, distortions in a single tire that create a tall tire, short tire within the tire. Over the next few discussions, we will explore each of these in a relatively brief manner, focusing on the main issues I find in the field today. I will start next, well, no, I'm not gonna start with inflation because we already did those, I did that out of sequence. And uh, make sure you have a load and inflation table sometime when you want to talk about inflations, because I'll show you what's going on with that. We did have on Facebook today a picture of a tire with a single cup in it on the right steer tire on the outside edge. Right. Correct. Correct. Right. (laughs) Left. Straight. Forward. (laughs) Who's on first? (laughs) What? (laughs) Um, I, I didn't get a chance to explore the rest of the tire. I can only go by the the image they gave me. The description was that this was the original steer tire on a brand new truck. He said there was no feathered wear on the tire. It was a Goodyear 399 steer tire. 
and an outside rib cup in a single spot could be something as simple as the fact that the new tires weren't balanced. And often brand new tires come out of the factory not balanced. Uh, it could be a wheel bearing issue, could be a mismount issue. Those are the first three that come to my mind. Um, but more information would be needed in order to really come up with a real solution on that one. Well, who uses Goodyear's and OEM tires? Uh, Peterbilt does. Peterbilt does. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure who else, but you can order Goodyear's on almost any new truck. Okay. Often there's an upcharge if you want to change from their standard tire because it disrupts the flow in the manufacturing process. So if you want, if they normally handle Michelin's and you want a Goodyear or Continental or something, they'll pay, charge you a little extra to, to merge that into their system. But I think Peterbilt's are, uh, it's one of the standard optional tires. Okay. All right. Well, I was wondering because maybe that would narrow down the likelihood of a bearing. Oh, well, that's true because if you've got a Peterbilt or a Kenworth and they come out standard with the non-adjustable unit uh, uh, sleeved bearings. Often so do the Volvos, but then a lot of international, most internationals don't. Yeah. Now, I also heard at the last trade show, at the Mid-American show, that the uh, Continental, not the Continental, the Conti, what am I thinking about? Conmet. I knew it started with the C. Yeah. The Conmet preset bearings and the preset plus bearings are becoming standard uh, available on a lot of brands. So apparently the manufacturers are starting to look at that as becoming a standard unit, which would make me very happy because bearing adjustment and loose bearings causes tons of problems. What? It's just a... Uh... Real quick, what is it about um, the bearing design, especially the old standard non-sleeve uh, double nut or casting design? What is it about that that causes it to go loose? Well, it doesn't go loose. It's improperly adjusted when they put it together. Most people tighten it up and then back it off a quarter turn. And with the thread pitch that's in the spindle and a quarter turn back off is going to leave you somewhere around 20,000 end play. And you're supposed to have less than five. Well, even if it is tightened properly, even if it is a double, but especially if it was a casting, uh, we still had to go back and adjust those every 50,000 miles mm -hmm. on the steel. Mm -hmm. you know, what, why was that? Well, remember that the bearing itself is rotating on the spindle, and the inner race of the bearing, which is on the spindle, is rotating. So you get a certain amount of wear between the bearing and the bearing journal and the spindle, and you get a certain amount of wear on the back side of the nut and the washer because it is metal against metal that's rotating there. Okay, yeah. So the bearing assembly, mm -hmm. the, the the cup, the actual, the, yeah, the actual cup there. That's not that's not really meant to spin though. On the, I mean, it's designed to be able to, but it's not. That's not a function that you really want. You don't want that spinning. You want the bearings themselves in that cup spin. Right. The, the rollers should be rolling, and the rest of it hopefully would sit still, but it doesn't. Right. Unless you have a sleeved bearing with a sleeve between the inner and outer bearing. Right. And then the race of the cup pushes against the sleeve. The sleeve pushes against the other cup. That cup pushes against the shoulder of the spindle. And when you tighten to 300 foot-pounds, that cup doesn't rotate anymore. There is no move. Yeah, now the only thing that's rotating are the bearing rollers, which is all you're supposed to have rolling. Right. So that's and that's why a, a unitized bearing, whether it's a, whether it's the uh, the assembly in a, in a uh, <laughs> the sealed unitized, the sealed style, unitized or style or the sleeved style or a sleeve style in, in current trucks or mm -hmm. bearing that never has to be adjusted, pressed and sealed or bearings or going you know out over to railroad. Uh, uh, Right. Wheel assemblies so that, that run a million miles without adjustment. Right. That sleeve assembly, that being pushed, the whole assembly being pushed together, requiring only the rollers to, to be free to move. That, mm -hmm. That's why they don't need to be adjusted. And it greatly reduces the wear points in the assembly. Right. So if you don't have that, that's why even in a new vehicle, even if it was adjusted properly at the factory, before your first set of tires is worn out, you can see where because of loose bearings. The bearings get loose. And that's why in all of the vehicle manufacturers, owner's manual, there's an instruction that at specific mileages, particularly with a new vehicle, you're supposed to jack it up, check the bearings, retorque the bearings, and retorque all your U-bolts and everything else because they all tend to settle and stretch and get loose. Yep. Okay. All right. Very
Very good. So we're starting on cupping today. <clears throat> I have no idea what kind of questions we're going to get, but we encourage you, if you have a question or comment, push one on your phone, we'll get to you. We do have one now, and we're going to continue with the, uh, the popular game of where's this area code? Uh, this one's 414, and I'm actually, I believe it's uh, Wisconsin. You think it's Wisconsin? Yes. I think it's Texas. Okay. All right. Hey, where are you from? I'm from Wisconsin. He is Wisconsin. You're good at this. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes I write it. What you got today? But I'm, in, I'm, in Pennsylvania, but I'm in Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> That'll be the uh, next one. Off with them. That'll be the next down. game we do. Where are, you, where are you supposed to be calling from and where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I got a little, I got a question. I think I know the answer. I, it's, it's, it's not to do with cupping, but I do have wear on the inside of my trailer tires, one position, I got a spread axle trailer, and that, normally that's a wheel bearing issue. Am I am I correct on thinking that it's about an inch wide all the way around the inside edge? Okay, it can be wheel bearings, and most often on most axles it is wheel bearings. But there is uh -huh. one particular axle that if you have this axle, it can be axle flex. As you hit bumps in the road, the axle is flexing and looking just like a loose wheel bearing. Now, usually, if it's the ax, if it's the axle flex, it'll be all four wheel positions, not just one. Okay. Yeah, it's just the yeah, it's just the one side. It's a, it's a Hen Hendrickson uh, axle on a Great Dane trailer. Okay. Now let's look at the at this Hendrickson axle. There's two Hendrickson axles available. One is a five inch diameter axle. It has a thick wall in it, and it's held in place with U bolts. The second the one, one is a six a six inch diameter with a much thinner wall, and it doesn't have U-bolts. It's welded into place. Right. You can't see that it's a thicker or thinner wall, but that's the issue. If it's a six-inch thick diameter, if it's a six-inch diameter axle. Yeah, I believe it's the five-inch. It's, it's got the U-bolts uh, holding, holding it on there. I uh, yeah. I got, listen, I, I, got, I just looked at my records while I was waiting on hold, and I got 195000 on these micro blue wheel bearings on that trailer. Is that a lot of miles on a wheel bearing for that trailer? No, no. A okay. standard bearing adjusted what we consider the wrong way, okay, will normally okay. national averages will get 350,000 miles out of a loose bearing, all right? All right. Properly adjusted, it's no surprise to get 750,000 to a million miles out of a good bearing properly adjusted. So I'll be darned. Well, one... I got them at 90 pounds. Uh, torque. Okay. And you, you didn't back off, right? No. Okay, so you need to check that one and see if wear has occurred enough that it's caused to loosen up a little bit, and then you just need to snug it up. Right. And what, I see. So yeah, yeah. What what's the what is the spread axle tire wear look like? Well, it's, oh, it's, 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 no, I mean not not for you, not for the customer, but for Mike. There is a, there is such a thing as spread axle tire wear, and it starts, I believe, it's the front left, front right, front right. Yeah, the front right tends to wear faster because when you go around a corner, you turn sharper to the right than you do to the left. You I sweep see. left, and as you turn sharp, you tend to bend, pull that right front trailer axle around the corner and slide it, and you take the outside shoulder off the right front. The next wear uh -huh. tends to be on the left front on the inside. Then it goes to the left rear, and then finally the right rear tends to be the best wear of all of them. Of in the spread uh, axle, and in a closed stand on a slider, you don't you don't see it the same way. But on a, on a spread axle, that's what you're. That's what we uh, expect to see is quicker wear on, on one position. It is the front right, and it's on the inside, and it's uh, it, it developed relatively fast. Um, okay. I just put, I put tires on in January, XTE Michelin's, and uh, and I I noticed it uh, we about a week and a half ago, really prominent. I had some okay, great, I had some issues with the axle, and more. I was under. Okay, go ahead. There's <laughs> thing I'd like you to check then, since it developed so rapidly. I want you to slide your hand across the tread on the tires, and see if there's feathered wear, sharp one way, smooth the other way. No and feathered wear. Feathered wear. Okay, then I'm back into bearings. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, listen. I got to tell you too. It's an old trailer, and the bushings are wore. 
on that on that, that axle. Okay. The, and uh, I'm going to have them replaced this week when I get back to Wisconsin. Uh, what, could that cause that at all, or, or would that be something totally different? I, I would expect something totally different to occur. Inside edge, inside tire with no feathered wear winds up being axle flexor bearings almost every time. And so I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Good. Well, I'm going to have to have that inspected again. The trouble is, the couple of guys that I got looking at this thing are old school, and they don't want to mm-hmm. learn nothing. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I have about twist their arms to torque them to 90 pounds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a game we have to play. It's tough out here, guys. Well, listen, thank you for your information. I'll get off, uh, let someone else get on. Hey, congratulations on the show. It's the first time I get to listen to it. Usually I'm sleeping at this time of the night. But uh, right. uh, that's great. Great to hear you. You should be able thank to catch these on iTunes podcasts. And uh, we're, we're recording them so they can be streamed, okay? I got you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. Okay, well, that was the only actual question we, we had. We've got a lot of people listening, but nobody wants to talk to us. That's is there okay. a problem? If they don't want to, if they don't want to talk to us, they don't have to talk. Then to we'll us. just sit here and talk to each other. We can talk to each other a little bit. You were, we are talking about cupping, and this is a conversation you can do an entire eight-hour seminar. Well, so. I could, but somebody just oh, there's two people clicked up that yeah, want to talk to us now. Okay. See, so you give them a chance, and they yeah. do it. Did you make a note on that one so we know who he was? Yeah. I don't want to lose him. We wind up talking to him twice. That would be bad. Okay, what area code we got? Oh, we've got the uh, five zero nine area code. Five zero nine. Five zero nine. What's your guess? North Carolina. North you're, Carolina. You're going to go North Carolina? Yeah. I'm going to Oklahoma. All right. Okay. Uh, well, so where are you well, from? Neither, What's that? Neither one of you are right. Big surprise. Big surprise. <laughs> five zero nine is Washington. Washington State. Okay. Uh, okay. Now they got more than one area code. So what part of Washington State? That's the eastern half. The western half. Eastern. Eastern, eastern half. half. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Very good. Oh. What yep, can we do for you? And well, I'm uh, noticing. Uh, I'm noticing a wear pattern on my left uh, left front sear. That is uh, the first. The two outside ribs. And uh, it's, I'm wondering what exactly that would be. It, it goes all the way around, and, and about, it wears about half the rib off. Okay, so it's the inside rib on the outside left rib. front. Outside rib on the left front tire. Yes. Okay. Is there any feathered wear on the tire if you slide your hand back and forth on it? Uh, that I haven't, I haven't checked yet, so I don't all know right. for sure. <clears throat> How does the truck handle? Does it drive straight or does it pull to the left or what? It pulls. It, well, it pulls slightly to the right when when I uh, when I'm on a good flat surface. Okay. Have Most you of, have you rotated these steer tires at all? Uh, not since they were put on. No. Okay. Is this a Peterbilt or a Kenworth? It is a Kenworth. And do you tend to run? Light loads or empty a lot? I uh, actually tend to run uh, tend to run mostly heavy loads. Every once in every once in a while, we get light loads. I'm not heavy. Loads. Okay, yeah. so you pull a reef. All right. Um, but we really need to know if there's feathered wear because that's really going to dictate which direction we're going to go with this. But. Occasionally, I'll run into a truck that has a Dana front axle, and Peterbilt and Kenworth are standard with those. That if the guy runs light loads because of the camber that's built into the front axle, it'll tend to wear on the outside edge of the right front tire. Okay. Nolan, or seeing that he's probably running heavy, or what? Which which Kenworth is this? Is it a long nose or a? What I'm model sorry? truck is? It's a Kenworth. It's a it's a six eighty or six sixty. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a 680. This is one no, of the new ones then, right? Oh, it's, a, it's a 660. It's, it's, a, it's a 2013 660. Okay. Is this one of those trucks that has a 50-degree wheel cut and you can turn it inside the building? Uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, got, it's got... Actually, I don't think I can. I, I can. I can turn it pretty sharp, but it's... 
I don't know that I can turn it uh, inside a building very well. But. Okay, if you if you were driving straight ahead and you turned the steering wheel all the way to the steering stops, like in a parking lot, yeah. could you turn it two full turns or would it take two and a half turns? I believe it takes two and a half turns to get to get to the stop. Okay, that's a fifty degree wheel cut, and a fifty degree wheel cut causes the steer tires to lean really hard on their outside edge when you're making a turn with that much of a cut. If you stood in front of a truck and had somebody turn the steering wheel, you would see that the inside turning tire, if you're turning to the left to be the left one, really leans up on its in outside edge as you're making that turn. And most okay. guys try to turn to the left as much as they can. They don't want to turn right because it's a blind turn for them, right? That's, that's true. We had some experiences years ago when they first came out with setback steer axles and they would turn 40 degrees instead of the old standard 20 degrees. And we had tire wear problems with them. The alignments were fine, but they would wear off a shoulder. And we found that if we adjusted the steering stops on the axle so you couldn't turn quite so far, we got a lot better tire wear. Okay. I will, I will suggest that to the boss when the uh... When I get it, give it back to the yard, but it's, it's a company truck, so it's not likely yeah. they're going to make any changes. <laughs> well, I'll definitely have to rotate the tires when I get back there. If it will save them tires and the driver is still willing to drive it where he doesn't cut quite so sharp, most owners will say that's fine. The big objection we get to reducing the steering cut is when the driver says, no, I want to be able to whip in and out of places, and if it costs tires, they don't care. Yeah. Well, I, I like I like the ability to be actually I feel like oftentimes I don't have enough turn uh, turn ability because this has mm -hmm. it does have a little bit longer wheelbase than uh, than the standard 660. So, and that's one of the reasons they keep going to these 50 and 50 degree five degree wheel cuts to get them to turn better, and it generally causes more tire wear when you do it. Okay. Well, now I have an idea where it's coming from. And so that's uh, that helps me a lot with that. So, All right. Now, if there's and, feathered wear, if there's feathered wear, the whole discussion changes. Yeah. Okay. What what would be the uh, if? Because I'm driving right now, so I can't get out and just check it. But uh, well, what, you would could, the, what would be the what would be the You could put it on cruise control and run alongside the truck and feel it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's sixty-two miles an hour. I don't think so. You're not going to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, I, um, I can't. I can't run. I can't run that fast. <laughs> <laughs> if there's feathered wear, that means either the toe is wrong or the drive axle alignment's wrong or both of them are wrong. Okay? Okay. But if there's no okay. feathered wear, then we're then we're back to talking about things like wheel cut and stuff. Right. Well, his heart is saying it's got a right pole but it's right on the outside of the Yeah, so I'm not I'm almost really feeling like this is a wheel cut deal. Right. Okay. Well there there is a possibility that there's something on something at the at, on the drive axle too, because I've been I've been feeling a bounce when I, uh, even when I'm fully loaded and I get into Jake Burton, I get it going down on my on the Jakes from between uh, between 63 and, and 55. I get a bounce. Okay. As I'm falling down top gear. Okay. So, is it the is it the big curved spring on the rear suspension, the flex there, or the 380 suspension? I believe it. I I believe it is. That's get out of the cab and look at that, too. Yeah, this, that suspension is susceptible to pinion angle changes as you stomp on the brakes or hit the jake brake, and a lot of vibrations can come out of that. One of the things we suggest they do with that suspension is you've got to make sure the U-bolts stay tight, because mm -hmm. if the U-bolts start loosening up, it'll really start chattering. Okay. I'll have them check that. So. Very good, sir. You have yourself a great day, and thanks for calling. Oh, I, I will. And, and by the way, I'm in Oregon, and I live in Idaho. All right, live in Idaho, call from Washington, but you're in Pennsylvania. You are lost. No, I'm in Oregon. I'm in Oregon. Oh, the other guy was in Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a great have a day. wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, well, that was a good call. I yeah. like that. Interesting. We can do some more of that stuff. Okay. All right, well, we'll try with this one. It's, uh, this is the 615 area code. 615. That's uh, that's uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Or is you it? You know what? You're right. I, I believe it is. I think it is. Let's right. try. 
Hello, Hello? there. Hey, is this uh, no, uh, no, this is Tennessee. This is Tennessee. Yeah, Nashville area. What? Nashville. I, Nashville. Nashville. That's right. Nashville six one five. Minnesota six yeah. five one. Okay, I got yeah. it. I got it. Yeah. Okay, okay, what you got? I got a two thousand classic, and uh, on my freight liner, I had a wheel seal that burnt up, and I had to put a spindle on it. This will be the rear driver's side. Okay. Mm-hmm. And now I uh, I bought two tires, and what I did was I matched up eighteen thirty seconds on the front, and matched up with that axle, and put those two together. They were both eighteen thirty seconds. Now I got the cupping on the inside rib of that that set where the spindle was put on. So and it's cupping real real bad, but the other tire is perfect. So I don't know what's going on. It's on the inside rib of the inside tire, right by the frame, correct? Correct, correct, correct. Be willing to bet your wheel bearings are loose. Because when they put the spindle on, it just didn't get it tight enough. Right. That's it? Mm. That, that is the right. most common cause of that. Now, let me ask you a couple more questions. Okay. In addition to the cupping, do you get an intermittent ABS brake light on your dashboard? It's been on for about a year. I had covered up because I can't get it to go off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about yep, still does your, when you're driving on a smooth road and you're holding a steady speed, do you get a vibration that comes up through the seat that shakes and then stops and shakes yeah. and then stops? Your yeah. wheel bearings are loose. Those are all, all indications. Of that. And when they tighten the wheel bearings, they need to reset the ABS sensors, and that hopefully will solve your ABS brake light problem, too. No kid. Mm. Yep. yep. I listened to the show last week, and I told the guys, I asked the guys about tightening up the wheel bearing. Maybe that might be it. They, no, 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 they swear. That wasn't it, though. I'm going to I'm gonna put new tires on there, and I'm going to have them tighten down the wheel bearings. And now, there's a, there's, a for the correct, there's a correct way to tighten the wheel bearings and wrong ways to tighten the wheel bearings. And if you can get them... To either look at a video we have on our website, mdalignment.com. You go to the video library. There's one on how to adjust bearings. Or if okay. they have to, they want to call and talk to me at our office. We've got an 800 number on our website. We'll be glad to talk to them. But if they tighten it the way most people tighten it, the bearing will be too loose, and you'll have the same problem again. It just won't go away. But um, it's a, we run into it okay. all the time. Like I said, they replaced the spindle. They're sure they did the job right. But it ended up with a loose bearing, tire wear, ABS light. Vibrations, yep. Do? It's all the same stuff, okay? Okay, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You have a good day. All right, bye. Okay, all right. Okay. That was an easy one. And it was cupping. Yeah, but it wasn't Minnesota. Yeah, well, should have been. Should have been. There. He was probably Minnesota, but he was lying to us. <laughs> you think? I No, I don't think. Uh, 615 is deaf. I We had a sales rep in Tennessee, and I remember that was Okay, all right. I'll take your word for it. What, what do we got for this one? What's this the number? Is 219, also familiar, but just not. Not, not 319. That's Iowa. Yeah. 219. I'm going to Idaho. Idaho. That's a pretty good bet. Let's uh, try I'm going to go with Illinois. You're going to Illinois. Okay, all right. All right. Hey, Hello there. Hello. Well, it's in Iowa, it? but it's Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. Can you hear me? I yes, can hear you just fine. fine. Um, which which so you... I heard... Go ahead. Go ahead. I've got a wheel bearing question. I've heard several numbers thrown around, and I guess I need to know what torque value to set them at. I'm going to write it down. The the I've got a 99 Volvo that's got the double nut on the wheel bearings, and in fact, just Saturday I ordered a set of the single locking. I'm going to try some of them on the drive. So what do you recommend to set them at? I've had old school guys swear they do it right, and I've, I need to know a torque value of how you do the inner, the two, the two nut ones, and also the single. What do you recommend? All right, we, we've got a chart that if you call our office, we'll fax you the chart, okay? Oh, okay. But right now I'll tell you what the numbers are so you can be thinking about it, all right? Okay. Now, 
Now, first of all, I need to know when you're doing this, are you going to have it stripped down to a bare hub, or are you going to be doing nope, it with wheels. wheels hanging? Yep, wheels hanging on it, and I know that okay, makes a good. difference, right? Because you're picking up more weight with two tapered bearings when you're tightening with the wheels on than when you have an empty yep. hub. Right. The thing is, a, a double nut, because of the jam nut moving the inner nut, you gain some torque. Yep. And on the single nut, you don't have that, so they have two different values, okay? Yep, I, I kind right, of so, figured that. All right, you're going to have the wheels on. You're going to a single nut, all right? Okay. And it's on the drives. So yep. on the drives, I would take the double nuts off. I would put a little block of wood or a wedge underneath the wheel to keep things from falling apart, all right? Yep. Put the single nut on, got it snugged up, get that block out of the way. Spin the wheel, tighten it to 200 just to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Back it off, then tighten it to 90. Do not back okay. it off after you hit the 90. Just put the clip ring in. Yep. Okay. You're on a steer axle with a single nut. You only have one tire instead of two tires. The drum is smaller, so you're picking up less weight. So on the steer axle, I would tighten it to 50. 50? 50. Single nut. We're fading out, I think. I, I think I heard yes. you say 50 foot pounds. 50, 5 0 on the front, and 90 okay. or 9 0 on the rears with a single nut with the wheels on. Okay, yeah. Okay, and we have real good luck with those numbers as long as you're not tightening up a bad bearing. If you have any reason to believe the bearings are bad, you better take it out and inspect them. And if they're bad, replace them. Because you tighten them to these numbers with a bad bearing, and the bearing will fail. Okay. Now, what's your process with the double? Oh, the, o the only difference on the double nut is you use a lower torque number because you're going to put the jam number on it. So on the uh -huh. rears with a double nut, I tighten it to 75 and then put the jam nut on. And on the front, I okay. tighten it to 35 and put the jam nut on. At 35 on the steer? It's 7.5 on the rear and 3.5 yep. on the front. Okay. All right. Uh, that answers my question. Good deal. Thank you, thank you very much. You have a great day. Nice to call. Where did he? He was Indiana. Indiana. Not Illinois. Indiana. I think he ought to move to Idaho. He can then I would have been right. Illinois is a lot closer. Yeah, but northern Idaho is just beautiful. It is. Of course, they got a lot more snow. Yeah. Winter's a lot tougher. Okay, he Indiana. Good with bad. He could stay in Indiana. It's okay with me. All right. He could visit in Idaho. Well, Maybe that's, that's true. Just... That would be sick. Yeah, let's do that. What do we got? <laughs> we got the 218 area code. We went from 219 to 218. Well, it must be right next door. It's right next door. Illinois. Ohio. You're going to go Ohio. Okay, all right. All right. Hello there. Uh, well, you're kind of close on both of them because I am in Illinois, but the phone number is from Minnesota. Minnesota? Is this a Sven and Ollie deal? <laughs> uh, well, I had an interesting question. I had a circumstance a couple years ago on one of our trucks. It was an International 9400, and it was slightly pulling to the right. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I, I looked at my fifth wheel plate. My fifth wheel bushings were bad, and I replaced them, and it seemed to straighten it out. I didn't know if that was something you guys have ever had before, or what would be causing that, but I was just it's wondering if there's any science to it. It's, it's possible that if the fifth wheel plate was tweaking the frame and twisting the frame because the bushings were bad, it could have torqued the frame and given you a bit of a pull. It's not something we run into a lot. We just wouldn't deny it. Now, how are your tires wearing now? Oh, uh, this was a couple of years ago. I, I'm not working with that truck anymore. It was wearing, if I recall right, it was wearing on the inside of the left front. Uh, and it seemed to quit after that also. The next tire that we replaced on there really didn't wear. Good. I'm glad it worked out. Remember, 
when we start giving advice on what we think is causing tire wear, we hope we're right 95% of the time. So there's always these exceptions that come up that will cause an issue like this. But if okay. you did it and it and you did it and it fixed it, I'm believing it. That's good for me. There's no sense in arguing with okay. success. Right. Okay? Well, you, know, you guys have a good day. Mm-hmm. I'd say. All right. All right. Well. Okay, he was where? He was uh, He was from Minnesota, but he was in Illinois. Confusing. Yeah. Well, we, that's what we do to ourselves. What part of Minnesota is 218? I think it's near Minneapolis. Minneapolis? Okay, all right. Well, I'll take your word on that. Right. See, again, I'm totally guessing all the time. Yeah, we should buy a map. <laughs> what? If we put a map underneath the glass on this desk, then every time somebody called and said what the number was, we could pick it. We, yeah, well. But that would ruin the game. Yeah. I don't want to ruin the game. This is more fun. <laughs> all right. We have another question on the board oh, wow, it is. or a comment, or he wants to get us running out of the country. What, what, what area code is he in? It's the 608 area code. 608. Oh, hell. I'm going to go Texas. California. California. All right. Well, let's see. You didn't put in. You didn't put in. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. All right. Well, yeah, I talked to you guys Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, Mike. I had the guy that had the bearing, the bearing issue in the trailer with a single uh-huh. nut. Now, that worked out okay. Question I have for you. I have an 07386T, and it had the wrong leveling valve on. So the uh-huh. suspension was about two, two and a half inches low. Right. Gave me all kinds of issues, beating me up, riding around the road rough. Had the valve replaced, and just before I had the valve replaced, I was looking at all my all eight of my drive tires, and they all got a funny wear to them. Mm-hmm. Now, would that, having that... I don't even know what the brand name of the valve was, but it wasn't the right valve for the truck. Would that have something to do with the way the tires would wear on its, on the back end of this thing? It goes well, down the road straight. Yeah, but 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 we got a binding going on in the drive lines, which is going to affect right. both directions up into the transmission and back to the tires. What kind of tire wear was this that you had in your drives? It's, this is a uh, it. it, it it was almost like a heel and toe. Now, I've got all closed shoulder tires on this thing. And uh, the front drives were, were wearing really, when I, when I put them on, I put them on, I, I put new sets on, and they were, all, they were all wearing flat, and they were wearing smooth until the last couple of months, last month, month and a half, I've been kind of noticing a little key, and then I thought it was because of my trailer being out of whack because the tires were wearing a little funny in the trailer. And, well, now when I got the nuts, the bearings tightened up, as you suggested to do, uh, couple weeks ago now it seems to be you know the, the tires those put wear on are actually going starting to come back out of it but i thought that had something to do with the bearings being off the back and kind of pushing a trailer the trailer kind of pushing the truck a little and you know doing all that funky oh. stuff well the trailer doesn't push a truck trailer pulls against the fifth wheel plate there's no push okay. in a trailer at all so okay. that's normally not the issue and this tire wear pattern you're talking about now is on all four tires on one axle or is it on all, all eight all tires? eight all eight and it is a heel and toe pattern, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a real, it's a real slight. You really gotta look to see it. Okay. I'm kind and of, a, kind of animal when it comes to come to watch that stuff because I try to get as much as I can out of these, out of these things that are not cheap. Sure. Now, how much horsepower do you have in your truck? Uh, horse, uh, what goes? 480 horse. 480. 480. Yep. 480. And I don't hardly get, I get, keep this thing about 65, 66 miles an hour unless I got to get around some slow ass and then I get up and boogie, but I slow it right back down. Okay, speed is normally not the issue for heel and toe, but engine horsepower and torque is. Certain tread designs are more susceptible to heel and toe than other designs. In other words, the larger the lugs are, the less heel and toe you'll see. The smaller the lugs are, the worse the heel and toe will be. Because heel and toe comes from engine horsepower, twisting the lugs as they go through the foot pin and creating the heel and toe. Oh, now, okay. The better the tires right. are in contact with the road, the more uniform the heel and toe is. Now, when the bearings were loose, it was doing all the beating up on one shoulder. But now that the bearings are tight, it's evening the wear out across all four of them. Right, right. Now, right. what I recommend you do is you X rotate your drive tires periodically every 50 or 60 or 80,000 miles in order to take the heel and toe back out of them and get the lugs back flat again, the tire will tend to run a little quieter 
and the tire should last longer. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Very good, I sir. I appreciate it, gentlemen. Oh. Gentlemen, have yourself a wonderful evening. You too. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. No. Where was he? Was Wisconsin? Wisconsin. From Wisconsin. We have had a lot of calls from Wisconsin. Two whiskeys. Uh, Indiana. In Indiana. Uh, we had a Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, no, no, he was calling, from, but he was in Pennsylvania. Sure. Uh, we had a Washington. Washington, sure. Okay. Not a lot of Southern. A lot of Midwest. Tennessee. Tennessee. We had a lot of Texans last time. Yeah, one day we couldn't get rid of them. Hmm. <laughs> did you put out a notice that they shouldn't call? I did not. Oh, you I didn't? Did not. Okay, all right. No, well, I'm, I'm glad that was it. Okay, all right. Even people from Florida. So we're talking about bearings causing cupping. Mm-hmm. We've got a guy that's got a chatter that could be coming from loose U-bolts on that flex air suspension. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that the U-bolts do loosen up on those and on the Freightliners because the design puts the main bracket under the axle. Under slung design. So all the weight is pulling down on the U-bolts and it makes them loosen up. Right. I had one of our alignment guys the other day that I was I, I talked to about a month ago and warned him about that flex air suspension. And he said, well, I hate doing flex airs because every time I adjust them and I back them out and pull them in to recheck them, there's some place we didn't expect them to be. Right. And I said, well, you better check the U-bolts. Gotcha. He called me the other day and said that he had done seven flex air alignments in the last three weeks. Every single one that he went underneath, the U-bolts were loose on. There was no rust marks. There was no evidence. But when he put the impact gun on them, they right. turned from a half a turn to two turns on the nut before they tightened up. He also noticed that once he tightened up the U-bolts, when he put a shim in and backed them out and pulled them in, they acted the way they were supposed to act. Very interesting. Okay. So we got to keep the U-bolts tight. It reduces vibrations. It reduces tire wear. It allows us to hold the alignment better. And it's back to the loose components thing that is one of the things we're going to talk about for cupping. Yeah. Uh, well. We had a question. He left. Or he hit the button twice. I'm really hit sure. the button twice? That's not a good thing. If you want to talk to us, push one. Right now we're out of questions, which means Kevin and I are going to sit here and we're going to start talking about his girlfriend. Huh. No, we're not. No, we're not? <laughs> no. no. Oh, should we talk about your children? Well, uh, we could talk about that. No, that's not a good thing to talk about either. <laughs> no. Not on a show we like this. talk about solving the world's problems. World's problems. Well, popcorn. The other top, uh, popcorn, yeah. If we got everybody popcorn, would it be better? Noisier. Noisier. <laughs> we got some questions. Let's see what they got. <laughs> All right. They want us to stop talking stop about Stop talking about this stuff. All right. What, what's the phone area code? 217. 217. Oh, we had 218, 219, 218. Now it's 217. Arkansas. Let's see what we got. I'm going with Pennsylvania. Okay. Hello there. Hello. Central Illinois. Central Illinois? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. What you got? Well, last night you guys were talking about uh, toll roads and the road condition of the roads. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, weren't you talking about that on the show last night or was that a recording? Oh, I'm sure we we have talked we have about in the past. I, I don't know. We talked about it recently. What you got? Well, not everybody realizes this. They expect the government to to uh, take care of the roads and build these roads, these super highways. Actually, they are all unconstitutional. Is that right? That might be one of the yes. world's problems. Well, I understood that none of the roads were owned by the federal government. All of the roads were owned by the state. But certain roads, the federal government would subsidize the maintenance of it if they maintain them to a standard that the government wanted, and they became well, part of, of course, the interstate system. Sounds right. Reasonable. According to, I think it was Roosevelt that changed it and made the federal highway. Uh, uh, it would have been Eisenhower. Eisenhower did it. Eisenhower, yeah. And they were supposed to be, they were supposed to improve these roads to carry the trucks. Called, uh, hauling the missiles to the missile silos. That's the reason they got by with building these super highways that they've got now. But actually, the roads are supposed to be built for postal delivery only. That's the only part the government is supposed to be in. Uh, well, if you if you went back before Eisenhower, the roads were designed for postal delivery. But the Eisenhower thing, and I'm not sure if Congress passed it or if he did it or how that thing passed. Maybe it was the U.S. Mm-hmm. But no, it wasn't the UN. It was it was the right. U.S. government. These are designed to be military transport roads. Definitely. 
They were right. copying the, the, the Autobahn in Germany, mm-hmm. and they decided they needed a swift way to move this stuff back and forth. Get things and, from the West Coast to the East Coast quickly so that we could run a war from either on either in either ocean. Right. So so they went past the postal delivery road to military transport roads. Yep. Right. And with the way trucks are going now, getting better fuel economy, and they're pushing all the fuel economy up on all the trucks, cars, and everything, that's going to lessen the road tax. And what we're headed for is toll roads on every road out there. Well, could be. No, we could we could go much worse than that. They'll they'll want to go instead of tolls. They'll want uh, uh, they'll want to track your mileage. Yeah, pay by the mile. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll track, track the miles in your vehicle. That's more than likely, yes. That's what I see. Sure. Sure. Could but be. I just want to make that comment. But as, I appreciate that. As long as the roads are smooth and the tires wear good, this guy's happy. Yep. That's, yeah. That's what we're All right. You have a good day. Yeah. Huh? All right. Thank, Thank you. Right. Bye. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? Well, what do we got? This one's going to be the 307 area. 307. We have left the 219, 218. Finally, we're out of Wisconsin and Illinois that day. We've gotten Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. Minnesota, Indiana. Yeah. Uh, Ohio's next. 307? Or Michigan. I'm going to go with Michigan. I'll go Ohio. Okay, you're on Ohio and Michigan. What do we got? All right. How about All right, where are you from? Wyoming. Wyoming. <laughs> I've got a, a 2000 SL106, and I've got about 180,000, 190,000 on my steers, and they're starting to cup on the inside. On the inside close to the frame or on the middle of the tire? On the inside close to the frame, on both, okay. both fronts. It seemed to start on the right inside, and now I'm seeing wear on the left inside also. Is there any feathered wear on your tire if you slide your hand back and forth across it? It doesn't seem to be, but I'm kind of probably not rubbing it very good. I, I Actually, I don't even know if I've rubbed it recently. Okay. I probably right. haven't. What I kind of I'm going to say I don't know. But they're uh, right. That's the XDA3 or XZA3+. Plus. That's a good tire. Okay, now, on the XDA3... In the middle of the solid rubber ribs, there is a small side cut in line with the rib. It's only about a half inch long, and they're spaced around the tire. If you just take the tip of your finger and run it back and forth across that little side cut, you can feel the feathering better than you can with your whole hand. Yeah. Yeah, just okay. with a little finger, you can just run now, it on that side left and right. If the alignment is causing this cupping on both steer tires, when you rub your finger on it, You'll feel a little sharp edge when you go in, and it'll be smooth when you come out. Yeah. And if you feel that on both steer tires, your truck is slightly towed out. And over a period of 180,000 miles, it'll start cutting. The second condition that you could find with that is that the truck will tend to have a shimmy in the steering wheel between 45 and 55 miles an hour. Have you ever noticed that? No, I don't have that. Okay. The third possibility is with a little bit of toe out, it may tend to want to follow cracks in the road and hunt just a little bit. That it definitely does. Definitely does. Okay. I yes. think you've got a little bit of toe out, and it's probably not more than a 32nd of an inch toed out compared to what I want it to be, or you wouldn't have got the 180,000 miles. Right. Okay. Now, when they do the alignment, when somebody checks this for you, you also want to make sure that the tie rod end joints are good and the wheel bearings are tight. Otherwise, resetting the alignment's not going to do you any good. Right. Now, would you like to check the toe yourself? Yes, I, I try to do all the work myself. <laughs> okay. This is real complicated. You need to go to the hardware store and buy some fancy tools. Okay? That we will only okay. find them. So, yeah, I'd have to check two or three. Yeah, you need a roll of duct tape. Mm-hmm. And? Okay. Any color? And you need a tape measure. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you need an ink pen. But you need an ink pen a different color than the the, the tape. Yeah, different than the da- the duct tape. Okay. Black tape. Okay. And you get a white. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to drive the truck up the street in a parking lot. Oh, and you'll need an assistant. Yeah. 
If she's got a nice skirt and looks like Vanna, it's even better, but an assistant of some sort. You won't be looking at her much. Okay. You drive, you drive the truck up straight with the wheels straight ahead, roll it to an easy stop. On the back okay. side of the steer tires, you put two pieces of duct tape, just little square pieces, on the outside rib of the tire, on the back side, low enough that you can string the tape measure across without hitting the frame or anything. Or the springs. Okay. Okay. You make two little marks on the duct tape, slide the tape across, somebody holds it on one ink mark, you measure it to the other one. Now let's make believe it reads 92 inches, just to pull a number out of my ear. Because you're going for the, the closest whole number, it'll make everything easier. Right. Then you're going to drive the truck straight ahead until the two pieces of duct tape show up on the front side, and you're going to measure it again. Now, what you would like is that the front measurement should be a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the back measurement. Right. And if that was the case? Toe's right. But I'll be willing to bet when you do it, the front measurement's going to be bigger. Yeah. Or it's actually, it could be just the same. It yes. could be zero sitting still. And zero's bad, too. But if, it's, if we wanted a sixteenth of an inch towed in, the front side towed in, the rear side's a slightly wider. Is that Okay. Okay, so a sixteenth shorter once I move it forward. Correct. Is that correct? Now, that's correct. Yeah. Now, if you're satisfied the bearings and the tie rod end joints and everything are good, and let's say it's towed out, just pick a number out of my ear, one sixteenth towed out instead of one sixteenth towed in. If you loosen the cross tube and you turn the tie rod one quarter of a turn, you're going to change toe one quarter of an inch. If you turn in an eighth of a turn, you're going to change to an eighth of an inch. So I would turn it, back the truck up, drive it forward again, and stop when that duct tape's on the backside, clean them off, clean your marks up, measure it again, roll it ahead, measure it again, and when it's right, tighten the clamps up. You're done. Yep. Okay. That sounds pretty simple. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't tough stuff. Well, he he explained that all in roughly three minutes. It'll take a little bit longer to get the job done, depending on how long the tie rod's been on the vehicle. Right. But it is it isn't that. Now we do have a book that I sell called The Common Man's Guide to Wheel Alignment that describes all this stuff in the book too. And if you wanted that, you could go to our website, mdalignment.com, and you can order it off the website. We'll either mail you one or you can download it, whichever way you prefer. Mm-hmm. Okay. That explains cool. not just how to do tow. That, is, that explains everything that we're talking about. Right. All right. Okay. Uh, would that explain, how do you know if you need new spring bushings? How do I know if I need That's what? Spring bushings on the front axle. Okay. Oh. All right. It, most of the time, I'm going to say 99.9% of the time, the front bushings are fine. Okay. That, that's not okay. what usually fails. The rear bushings fail where the spring shackle is, and those don't affect the alignment. They affect the handling a little bit, but they don't affect the alignment. But if you want to check them, the easiest way is to take a small bottle jack that will fit between the leash spring and the frame, and you jack the frame up and the spring down until that shackle straightens out and then you can put a pry bar in there and pry on it and see if it moves. If it, if the bushings are gone, put new ones in it. Okay, between the leaf and the and the frame. Wait, say that say that again, because for some reason it cut out. Yeah, it's always cutting out. You want a short little bottle jack that will fit between the leaf spring and the frame, right behind the steer axle. And you jack up the frame to take the pressure off the leaf spring. And that spring shackle will tilt until it's straight up and down. Then you can pry on it with a, with a pry bar and see if it's loose. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Have yourself a good day. Thanks. You too. All right. Bye-bye. That was Wyoming. A that was cowboy. Wyoming. We've, had, we've had badgers and gophers. And, yeah. Uh, Illinois. Badgers. What? What's Hoosiers? Uh, that's 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 uh, Indiana. But what's Indiana. the ones in Illinois? Well, the Illini. The Illini. Okay. All right. Bear, uh, okay. All right. Very good. Uh, we got another one there. We got four seven nine. Four seven nine. Let's just 
pretty random numbers as far as I'm concerned. So um, Texas probably. You're going to say Texas, and I'm going to say Jamaica. All right. Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay. Where are you from? Close. Close to Texas, Arkansas. Arkansas? Tried Arkansas. Well, I guessed okay. once today. I wasn't going to give it two shots. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, 2011 Western Star, and on the tandem drives, I was getting the bearings adjusted the MD alignment way, and it was recommended changing their original factory nuts, lock nuts, to a different style. Uh, I can't remember the name of them. They kind of have a locking clip Probably on pro- it. Pro-torque nut. They were pro-torque nuts. Is that an improvement over the the, the factory ones, or would I yes. then okay with keeping the factory ones? You can keep the factory one. They work just fine. I've used them for years. But if I have to replace the nut, if there's some reason that i got to put new nuts on, I'll put on the pro-torque single nut with that little orange clippering in it. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I wouldn't yep. automatically go out and buy those if I've got two good nuts and I can put them back on. Okay. Yeah. They. Um, yeah. One of them, the ears were damaged, uh, mm-hmm. so I just went ahead and replaced all four. I was just wondering yep. if that yep. pro torque was better. Just a pro torque with a little orange clip ring. I think it's a very good nut. Okay. Thank all you. All right. Well, we've got three minutes. You have a good time in Jamaica. Or Arkansas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh, we've got three more minutes and three more calls. So let's see if we can get all these done. Speedy answers this uh, time. 928. 928. Um, Texas. Okay. Uh, Florida. Okay. Hello there. Right. Yeah. 928 is Arizona. 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 Hey. All yeah. right. Very good. What you got? Uh, I guess I I can't figure out what your uh, website was. Was it MB or ND? I called to ask you, and then you said it, but I didn't understand what you said. Our website is M as in Mike and D Uh as in dog alignment service. Oh, okay. MD. Mad dog. Mad dog alignment service, mentally deficient alignment service. Uh, <laughs> okay, and uh, I I just kind of I don't have a truck of my own, but I help a lot of other guys work on their trucks. You were talking about the uh, wheel bearing adjust, but what do you torque the jam nut to there? Well, the jam nut or I use you? a German German torque spec on the jam nut. I want it guten tight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, there is a number, according to the engineers, you're supposed to use for any jam nut. And the jam nut is supposed to torque to double the value of the inner nut. So if the inner nut is at 75, the outer nut is supposed to be at least 150. If the inner nut is at 35, it's supposed to be at least 70. Okay, you you, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, i got to say, the LMS system. The LMS system uses uh, 300 on the inner and only 250 on the jam. Yeah, which I, I'm a little confused about, but I, I'm just quoting what the uh, right. the ASE says. Yep. Okay. Uh, huh, I don't remember what it was I was going to ask you now. I've slipped my mind. But, uh, well, that's what oh, you get. Oh, your, your website, you said there's a, uh, a chart there. I can just go print it out for these... Uh, for these uh, bearing adjustment torques? Uh, there is a video on there for wheel bearing adjustment, and the chart is on there. But if you just oh, yeah, email okay. us and tell us you want the chart, we'll be glad to email it back to you. Yep. Okay. Where do I email to? It's on the website, and there's a contact button on there, and you can just email your question to John. Oh, okay. All right. All right? Okay, well, I appreciate right. it. Thank you. You have a good day. Well, thank you. All right, you too. All right, All right we're going uh, fast. What do we got? Let's see if we can get through them. 720. 720. Um, Texas. Nebraska. Okay. It's not Nebraska. There's no way. <laughs> Colorado. Hello, Colorado. Hello, <laughs> well, they wear cowboy hats yeah. in Colorado, too, so that's part of Texas. <laughs> that's part of, okay. 
<laughs> um, I have a question. I have on my drive tires, left uh, inner, but front uh, tire, I had serious wear on that. Now, the other tires, not. They're looking good. This uh, this front inner tire, and to include the in, inside wear. Just right by the front. that tire out. Yes, right by the frame. The wheel bearing's loose. Yep, and it might not be that side. Oh, it could be. It could it be the bear, It could be the bearing is loose on the right side, cupping the left tire, or it could be the bearing is loose on the left side, cupping the left tire. But inside edge, inside tire, ninety nine percent of the time, it's a wheel bearing loose. Yep. Okay. 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 Make that easy. <laughs> Make that easy. easy. All right. You have a great day. Thank you. Right. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. All right. What's the last one there? What is it? Yep. What is one it? last question is, what is 231. It? 231? 231. New York City. New York City. Mm, I'm going to go with Ohio. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? Hello there. Hello there. Boy, that's really good. That's really good. Not working. Uh, it's not working. Sorry. Okay. We can't hear you. We'll try you next week. Yeah, I appreciate back. all of you calling in and all of the questions. We've had a great time. You guys have yourselves a great day, and we'll try this again next week. We'll continue talking on cupping. Cupping and the world's problems. And the world's problems, yeah. The drama. How they need more so popcorns. Okay. Bye. Thanks for joining us on Rolling Toe. If you like what you heard here, leave us a rating and review on iTunes or listen to our other shows at audioroad.letstruck.com. To get in touch with our tribe, call us at 855-800-FUEL. That's 855-800-3835. Thanks for joining us for the ride down the audio road.